Assalamu alaikum beautiful people. Today I'm going to teach you the listeners. The listeners is a poem. It is in your syllabus. It is the sixth chapter of your English textbook. Uh, my today's lecture has the following components. Uh, first, we will discuss. We will read uh, text of the poem. Then we will discuss life of the poet, uh, meaning of the title, paraphrase of the poem, themes, literary devices, a uh, glossary. Text of the poem is here. The listeners. The listeners is written by, composed by Walter de la Mare. Is there anybody there, said the traveler, knocking on the moonlit door, and his horse in the silence champed the grasses of the forest's ferny floor, and a bird flew up out of the turret above the traveler's head, and he smote upon the door again a second time, is there anybody there, he said. But no one descended to the traveler, no head from the leaf-fringed sill, leaned over and looked into his grey eyes, where he stood perplexed and still. But only a host of phantom listeners that dwelt in the lone house then stood listening in the quiet of the moonlight to that voice from the world of men. So stood thrunging the faint moonbeams on the dark stair that goes down to the empty hall, hearkening in an air stirred and shaken by the lonely traveler's call. And he felt in his heart their strangeness, their stillness, answering his cry, while his horse moved, cro while his horse moved, cropping the dark turf neath the starred and leafy sky. For he suddenly smote the door even louder and lifted his head. Tell them I came and no one answered that I kept my word, he said. Never the least stir made the listeners, though every word he spake. Fell echoing through the shadowiness of the still house from the one man left awake. I they heard his foot upon the stirrup and the sound of iron on stone, and how the silence surged softly backward when the plunging hoofs were gone. The poem is comprised upon 36, uh, 36 lines, 9 stanzas. Rhyme scheme is A, B, C, V, uh, written in red ink here, stone, gone. Uh, here we have a pic of the poem, house. Uh, you have a man here, horseman here. Next is life of the poet. First, I would like to show you people. The photo of the boy Walter de la Mare, born in 1873, died in 1956. This is Walter de la Mare. So Walter de la Mare, he was a poet, a novelist, a short story writer. He was born in England. Uh, he wrote from the age of 22 and continued writing poems, novels and other things till he died. Best to remember for the listeners 1912. The listeners was written by him in 1912 and he is famous in the world only for this poem. He has written other poems also, other things also, but those things did not get him uh, fame. Those things did not get uh, popularized in the world. Uh, the, the people in the world know him only for this poem. They say second most popular poem in English language after If by Kipling. Uh, Rudyard Kipling is another poet and he has written many poems. One of his poems is If and If is the most famous poem, most popular poem in the world. After If, this poem that I'm going to teach you people, uh, that is the listeners, is the second most popular poem in the world. They say favorite poem of uh, Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy is a uh, world is uh, one of the best novelists and he loved this poem the listeners that is why I say the listeners is the world famous poem all the people in the world uh, read this poem and as for this guy Thomas Hardy is concerned they say when Thomas Hardy was on deathbed his wife was reciting to him the listeners 
Walter de la Mer married Elfrida Ingpen and he had three kids. His many books, his famous books are Memoirs of a Midget, Collected Stories for Children, and his uh, books deal with horror fiction, supernatural fiction. Second uh, component of the lecture is meaning of the title. Meaning of the title of this poem is very simple. The listeners. The listeners is a noun, grammatically speaking. And the listeners means those who hear you attentively. And in the poem, it refers to a bunch of ghosts who don't respond to the calls and knocks of the traveler. And next to we have a paraphrase of the poem. Paraphrase of the poem, I'm going to read it for you people. A mysterious horseman arrives at a lone house built somewhere in a dense forest. It is late at night. He knocks three times on the door of the house, but no one opens the door for him. He senses the presence of ghosts inside the house. Finally, he says that he kept his word, he fulfilled his promise, mounted his horse and gallops away. Who he is, why does he come there, whose is the house, nothing is explained in the poem. Nothing, nothing at all. The poem leaves the reader with a lot of unanswered questions. Next component of the lecture is themes. First theme is silence is the best means of communication. Silence also has something to uh, tell us, to uh, they say silence is the best uh, means of communication. Well, uh, if you are all alone, uh, uh, say, uh, if you are all alone sometimes, nobody is around, no human being, maybe you are in some desert on some island and uh, nothing is around, no noise, nothing at all. You know what will happen to you? You will just get scared. Understand? And that is what happens here in the poem. There is silence. The uh, this traveler knocks on the door. Nobody answers his knocks, and he gets scared. Understand? Because silence uh, conveys fear to you, horror to you. That is why I say it is the best means of communication. What does it communicate? It communicates fear. Second theme is limits of human reason to understand the things. Well, the traveler does not understand his surroundings. We also don't understand why traveler is there, who built that house. Understand, Walter de la Mer perhaps uh, drives home to us, makes us understand that we human beings, we don't understand everything. Understand, we compromise with things. Even this universe, human beings with all their knowledge, research and universities and libraries and all that, we haven't understood even 1% of universe. Forget about universe. We human beings, we haven't understood even 1% of our nature, human nature. Now, why people behave the way be they behave? Why are they evil? Why are they good? Why they cheat? We don't understand. So, limits of human reason is another theme. Third theme is search for meaning. Existential question. Existential question. Existentialism. Existentialism is a philosophy that tells us that nothing in the world ha is meaningful. Understand? Nothing in the world is meaningful. Uh, things in themselves have no meaning. It is we human beings that attach meaning to things. Uh, same in the poem. Poem itself does not have some clear and categorical meaning. But we readers, students, teachers, we have to attach some kind of meaning to it. Understand? And last is the uh, to raise the emotion up here. As I said, to raise the emotion up here, if you tell this story to your kids, Understand, if you tell them that there was a travel, it was late at night, he was uh, somewhere in the forest and he was knocking on the door, the people, the inmates of that uh, house, that lone house, did not open the door for him, then he got scared, he ran away. I guarantee that those kids, their heartbeats will increase and that is what happens here and that is what Walter de la, de la Mer is dealing with supernatural fiction, uh, supernatural, uh, fiction horror fiction next uh, component of the uh, 
uh, poem is literate devices. First literate devices, alliteration, it means repetition of consonant sounds at the start of words. Uh, example from the poem is Forester's Ferny Floor. Fur, fur, fur. Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia is another literate device used in the poem. It means sound suggests the meaning of the word. For example, hissing, buzzing, chomping, even the sound of these words. Uh, uh, tell us the meaning of the uh, of, of these words then there is metaphor metaphor is simile you people know it uh, in short metaphor is indirect comparison and here in the poem word host voice silence these metaphors have been used binary is one more literary device it means a pair of contrasting words day night laugh cry purple accents still are the examples symbol it is definition is one word refers to two different things possessing similar qualities for example bird bird refers to bird itself understand animal and here in the poem bird refers to the peace in the forest and that peace is disturbed understand because this bird it comes out of its nest and flies over the head of the traveler likewise horse horse is an animal but horse at the same time refers uh, to the to the life in the forest. Likewise, silence. Silence means silence, you know, a positive noise. But at the same time, this silence refers uh, to the, uh, you can say that environment, that air around that house. One more literary device is rhyme scheme. Rhyme scheme means pattern of similar sounding words. So rhyme scheme in this poem is A, B, C, B. Uh, glossary. These difficult words have been used in the poem. One is chomp, means eat noisily, a turret, balcony, cell, extended window, edge, turf, grass, eye, yes. Turf, grass. We, uh, in British English, they say grass. In American English, they say grass. So, grass. I means yes, plunging hoops, feet off, horse, purple accent still means confused, leaf fringed means border covered with leaves, moonlit shining with moonlight, a smite means hit. End of the lecture, and this is it, end of the lecture.